Hi, I'm Hannah and in this video I'll be walking you through how to bake out low poly meshes and materials in Marmoset Toolbag 4 and how to live link them to Toolbag's brand new texturing system. Toolbag 4's baker has been completely revamped to make use of the new ray tracing system behind the scenes. Toolbag's baking really shines with RTX cards, where you can expect to be able to bake 4K AO maps in a few seconds. But even without an RTX card, you will notice significant speed improvements in intensive bakes when compared to Toolbag 3. So first things first, you're going to want to add a bake project to your scene. To add a bake project, navigate to Scene, and then Add Object, Bake Project. You can see that this has now added a new entity to the scene hierarchy, and there's a couple of elements here within it that I'll need to go through. First of all, I'll go over the concept of bake groups. Bake groups are a way of grouping together corresponding elements of your high poly and low poly meshes, so that you don't need to explode your assets prior to baking in an attempt to avoid intersection errors. You can add new bake groups to the bake project via this folder icon. You can manually drag meshes into bake groups. In this instance, the low poly mesh will only bake information received from the high poly meshes within the same bake group folder. Bake groups can also be renamed to keep the project organized. While you can arrange these bake groups by hand, I personally use Toolbag's Quick Loader to automatically set up my groups for me. On the parent bake project in the geometry panel, press on the load button underneath the Quick Loader heading. With your OS browser window open, select both your high poly and low poly meshes together. For the quick loader to work, you need to ensure that all of the meshes and submeshes in your OBJs or FBXs have been named with an underscore at the end, followed by either high or low as needed. The quick loader will use these names to automatically name bake groups and will use the suffixes to place the corresponding meshes in the right places within the groups. For example, here the quick loader has determined that the attachments 01 should be its own bake group and has grouped the low poly mesh and the high poly mesh based on its naming conventions. You might have noticed that there's quite a few other settings in the bake project that we'll need to take a look at before proceeding on. In the geometry panel, there's various checkboxes to do things like ignore transforms and backfaces, ensure hidden meshes are enabled, and set your tangent space. Before we bake out any maps, however, we're going to want to set up a preview material so that we can have visibility of our bake results in the viewport. At the top of the bake project setting, next to the bake button, are three bubbles. The first two with the H and the L will hide your high poly groups and low poly groups respectively. The P button is for previewing your output maps. If you click on this, Toolbag will create a new preview material with the relevant baked maps automatically linked. This preview material will also automatically update if you need to rebake the maps at any point. The output section is where you specify settings for your resultant texture maps. You can set the file name, the amount of samples used, the format, the level of padding between UV shells, and whether the output should be in one multi-layer Photoshop file. Underneath this is the brand new texture set linking. This is a new addition and works hand in hand with Toolbag's new texturing system. In this section, you can set up texture sets and link texture projects as well. Texture sets are materials that are applied to your low poly mesh. Each texture set will contain its own set of bakes and the texture resolution for each set can be controlled independently. This is particularly useful for projects that require multiple materials, such as a character's head, body, and clothing. As for texture project linking, I will be going into this in depth a little later on in this video, but in a nutshell, this will link bake projects and texture projects together 
for seamless iteration. At the bottom is the Maps configuration panel. Here you can choose which maps to bake out. If you want to add more, click on Configure. This will bring up a dialog window where you can add as many output maps as you like. Toolbag supports most common map types, such as normal, curvature, height, position, and so on. But we've also included plenty of other map types for you to adapt Toolbag to your pipeline. Once you've added the outputs you need, make sure to check them in the maps list to enable them in the baker. On any of the listed output maps, click on the cog icon to access additional settings. Here you can change the suffixes of the map and other settings such as flipping the axes. It's worth noting that baked maps can be previewed in the viewport at any point with this button. So here I'm just previewing the ambient occlusion map to demonstrate additional AO specific settings. In the ambient occlusion settings, you have more control over your ray count and search distance. Upping the ray count increases the overall quality of the AO bake and will produce a cleaner result. The search distance slider is used to limit how far rays travel, which in turn can be used to fine tune the scale of the AO result. Zero is the default setting which disables the search distance and means the distance of the rays will not be capped. If I set the search distance to 10, you can see that some of the shadowing is being limited already. Further dropping the search distance to 3 will produce an even tighter result. The search distance setting is impacted by your scene units, so you may need to play around with these if you're not getting the results that you expect. Additionally, you can toggle whether to ignore bake groups and add floor occlusion to the calculations. Once happy with your settings, simply click on the bake button at the top to initiate Toolbag's baker. Bake times have been significantly improved in Toolbag 4 when using RTX cards due to the baker now using the ray tracing system. I'm going to quickly switch to this basic cube model to demonstrate Toolbag's skew correction and cage adjustment settings. Inside a bake group, by clicking on the low poly subfolder, you can see the settings to adjust the cage offset and skew correction. These might be familiar to existing Toolbag users, but I'll quickly explain how you can use them to improve your baking experience. First of all, you can toggle the visibility with these two checkboxes. The projection distance of the cage can be increased universally with these two sliders. However, Toolbag also provides artists with the ability to selectively paint in adjustments to the cage projection. If you click on the paint offset button, you can begin painting directly in the viewport to increase or decrease your offset amount. This is super useful if there's finicky areas in your model that aren't quite being encompassed by the cage and will be more suited to complex meshes than universal sliders. Additionally, the opacity of the cage can be adjusted with this slider. The skew painting is an incredible tool for correcting skew distortion and projection errors in baked maps. Skewed details are particularly noticeable on areas where detail has been baked onto large flat surfaces and like with the cage you can paint directly in the viewport to adjust the normal direction of the faces. You can tell if skew correction has been applied because the normal handles will straighten out and change to red. In both the cage offset and skew canvases you can clear all painted information by clicking on the clear button. If enabled, AutoBake will update to give a preview of the new projection. You can toggle how intensive of a calculation this is in the drop down menu. Quick AutoBakes will be rough looking but are great for previewing your corrections quickly. It is worth noting though that AO doesn't currently update to show live changes, so this may introduce some discrepancies in your viewport. After tinkering with your offset and skew correction settings, do a full rebake to see the final results. As promised, I'm now going to talk about the new Live Link feature that connects bake projects and texture projects together. 
If you're not familiar with Toolbag 4's new texturing system, then I highly recommend checking out our dedicated texturing in Toolbag 4 tutorial video before diving into this one. First of all, in the Bake object, navigate to the Texture Sets panel that we looked at earlier in this video. Here you can use the drop down menu to create a new texture project that will automatically link up to the Bake project. If I switch to the new texture project, you can see that the material has automatically been linked. And the input maps have been populated with those which Toolbag just baked out. If you wish to use additional texture sets, like shown in the character example earlier in this video, you can do so with this checkbox. If you already had a texture project in your scene, you can use the same drop down menu in the texture linking area to link it up instead. Once a bake project is linked to a texture project, the input maps used to drive generators and masks in the texturing project will now be automatically updated if at any point you rebake. That's pretty much all I have to show you for Toolbag's baking tools. If you need any more information about any of Toolbag 4's other new features, head on over to our website to watch our other tutorial videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.